Hey, it's Jason and Chris here from Legend Story Studios, and this is a hero spotlight with the game developers of Flesh and Blood. Today, we're going to show you how to combat the Room Fear with Katsu. We will be using the Katsu and the Room Fear hero decks for this game. When battling the Room Fear, it's very important to pick your spots. Although you can always block every one of the Room Fear's attack, they will gradually do damage to you as you can't always predict how much attack reactions they have so they'll all be, always be able to push through a few points of damage so it's important to keep your life total high and use, use a crucial turn to take lots of damage but reciprocate by dealing massive amounts of damage and put Dorinfi on the back foot. And I will be utilizing blocks and when when I feel the time is right, I'm going to try to unleash a 4-5 to five card hand to really deal some massive amounts of damage in one turn. So Chris wins the die roll playing against the Runfia. On the very first turn of the game, we're going to be looking to block with most of our hand. Unfortunately, I started the game with a energy potion. This means I only had 3 cards that can be used to block, but I am looking to block Chris's first attack with his weapon. Chris plays a um, Nature's Pilgrimage and then attacks with Dawnblade. At this point the attack is only for, for 6, but since it's the first turn of the game, I want to be blocking with as many cards as I can, so I block for 8, leaving the only card I cannot block in my hand. Luckily, luckily for us, Chris did not have any um, pump spells, so we draw back up to 4. Um, when I look, look at this hand, we don't actually have any combos to be playing on this turn, so we want to start with a head jab. The reason we're starting with a head jab here is even though it's only attacking with one, Chris needs to respect it hitting and it warrants a block. As you can see here, Chris blocks with refraction boulders straight away, and we're just going to be attacking with weapons. We're going to be attacking with two weapons here and then playing out an energy potion. We set a somersault in our arsenal, which is very important to combat to Rinfia, as it does not turn on reprise, as it is not played from our hand. Chris does a driving blade and attack with Dawnblade. This threatens another attack as well as 6 damage. Looking at my hand, I do not have a very powerful hand, so I want to be looking to block with a lot of cards. We're blocking for 9 here, even though the attack's only for 6. The most likely pump from Chris is going to be pumping it for 3, so we wanted to block an extra 3, and we're not going to be using the extra card for much damage anyways. On my turn, I'm just going to be attacking with the 2 daggers. We're not in a rush to do damage as long as we're, we're not letting Chris grow his Dawnblade and as long as we're not taking much damage, it's fine to only be attacking for 2 damage a turn. Later on in the game, I'll be looking to go for a more explosive turn. At this point, Chris kept a full hand, so he's going to be doing a more powerful attack. It's important to pay attention to how many cards Chris has at the start of the turn because the more cards he has, the more likely there is going to be a giant pump coming our way. Now at this point I'm just evaluating whether or not I should be defending or I can do a more powerful attack. I choose not to not to block this attack and then Chris will attack again with Dawnblade. At this point I'm just going to be using Somersault from my arsenal to prevent Chris from getting Dawnblade counter but I'll be taking a bunch of life as a result. Now that I've kept a full hand, I'm going to be starting with leg tap, and this warrants a block for 4 from Chris. And then we're going to chain it off to a Surgeon Strike. The reason that every single attack needs to be blocked by Chris is we're threatening Katsu's hero ability, and that will allow us to search our deck for a more powerful card. At this point, Chris is trying to figure out if he should be blocking the Surgeon Strike. He chooses not to block the Surgeon Strike, and we don't use Katsu's hero ability because we already have a Wyoming Gust Wave in our, in our hand and we're just going to play it straight away. That also warrants another 2 block from Chris. So over, overall we took out 3 cards away from Chris and also did some damage. We did take more damage than he did on his previous turn, but this is where we're going to start trying to swing the tempo. 
The less cards we leave Chris with in his hand, the worse his Dawn Blade attack is going to be. So Chris can only attack for free, and unlike previous turns, I do not have to overblock this attack. Chris only has one card in his arsenal, it doesn't have any other cards in his hand, so we know that attack's not going to be very big. So now it's back over to us, and we don't have four cards in hand, nor do we have a hand that can do a lot of things. So we're simply just going to attack with dagger, then attack with open the center, threatening to do a little bit of damage, or make Chris block with some cards out of his hand. You can see I'm holding a leg tap in my hand. We're going to be setting that up in the arsenal. It's going to be very important for us to have a card in the arsenal and have um, three or four cards in hand at the start of our turn because Ninja does excel at doing a lot of damage by playing multiple cards. Chris does choose to defend with Steel Blade Shunt, taking two cards out of his hand. So although we didn't block any damage, we are preventing a lot of damage coming at us because Chris only has two cards left in his hand. Chris chooses to play a Driving Blade. It is the blue one, so he is only attacking for four. He has one, one more card in his hand, but at this point we're not too worried about it's a big pump. I choose to take the four damage here as my hand is very good and we're going to be doing a lot of damage. So we're going to start the turn by popping off our cross straps and play a Surgeon Strike. The Surgeon Strike, although we don't have a Wyoming Gust Wave in our in our hand and we're, although we're trying to go for other combo chains, this warrants a block from Chris because if he lets this through we can discard any zero cost card for Whelm and Gust Wave and Chris does not know what cards will be in our hand. So after much consideration Chris plays Somersault which is what we wanted to happen. Now we're going to be looking towards playing Leg Tap out of the arsenal. Likewise, this also would respect a block from him. If he chooses not to block, we would have searched for Rise and Knee Thrust. But Chris elects to block, and then we're just going to play. We're just going to play this attack for four. Although it doesn't have combo, it's still it's good to attack here to deal some damage to Chris or try to get cards out of his hand. You can see we're leaving Head Jab in our hand to put in our arsenal. So at, at this turn cycle, Chris has three cards in his hand, which is important to note because we want to kind of have an idea of how big Dawnblade can grow up to. So Chris is attacking for Dawn, with Dawnblade for six with one additional card in his hand. So we know like this, this can most likely um, go up to nine at most. Because we know that he's attacking with six, he might be pump, pumping it up. We're going to actually be blocking here for seven. The reason I blocked for seven on that attack was because I had Somersault in my hand. Chris is most likely to have a plus three damage in his hand. If he just does choose to do this, he will make his attack go for nine, in which case I'll play Somersault to, to turn my seven into nine. However, I don't want to be playing my Somersault yet. It is a defense reaction, and I can choose to see if Chris wants to play an attack action first. And since Chris does not elect to play an attack reaction, we get to hold Somersault in our hand to put in our arsenal for a future turn. On my turn, I'm going to be playing Head Jab here. Chris has to respect the block, so he loses his last piece of equipment that can defend. And we're going to go a bit more aggressive and go straight for a Surgeon Strike. We know we have a Somersault on our hand, so if the Surgeon Strike connects, we can easily grab the Red Gust Wave for 4 damage. However, it does not connect, and we get to lay down the Somersault we had from the previous turn down in the arsenal, ready to defend Chris's attacks. Chris chooses to attack with Dawnblade without playing any action cards before. We know he still has Refraction Boulder, so even if this hits, he does, um, he will let it get go again. We choose to play a Somersault just from the Arsenal. This means he does not get the Reprise ability, but Chris is still choosing to Biting Blade to deal two extra damage. However, he is not going to be giving this attack go again, so we 
only take two damage in this exchange. So on my turn, I have a four card hand, and I'm gonna start with a dagger tap before playing leg tap. We can see in my hand, I have two parts of the leg tap combo, and also a head jab that I can discard to get the last part of my combo. So even though we don't have the full combo assembled in our hand, we are threatening it as long as either leg tap or rising knee thrust deals damage to Chris. At this point, Chris's hand is not very good, so he's going to be using Hope Merchant's Hood. Chris wants to use his Hope Merchant Hood now instead of his turn, because then he gets full information on whether or not his new hand he wants to defend with or attack with on his next turn. Chris decides to play Steel Blade Shunt using Wounding Blow, which is good for us because that eliminated two cards out of Chris's hand, and now we play Rising Knee for us. Now Chris has a choice of blocking with the two remaining cards in his hand, allowing us to now set an arsenal, or if he chooses not to block this, we're going to be searching for Blackout Kick to threaten 7 damage. Chris decides to block my attack for exactly 5. At this point I have Breaking Scales, so that will push over 1 extra damage. It's very important that Rising Knee for us did 1 damage here because it allows us to discard our remaining card to Katsu. At this point Chris is defenseless, he has used 4 cards to defend our attacks and we still manage to get damage through. So now we search out for Blackout Kick which is for 7 damage and this will do the final points of damage winning us the game against the Rinfear. So as you can see from our game, we, we decided to play very defensively against the Rinfear as we know that if we don't take much damage, we can choose when we want to finally take a big massive swing from Chris and then do a devastating combo from Ninja. I started the first few turns of the game defending his weapon attack, but as soon as I drew a hand that was able to capitalize, I chose to not block his weapon attack taking damage and doing a full on combo to deal massive points of damage to Chris. If you enjoyed this video and want to see other videos like this, give this video a thumbs up, like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more content from FabTCG.